Hi everyone, in the following video we'll take a deep look at some advanced artificial agent behavior that was showcased along our 2020 L2 RPM Labs competition by the best agent. This will help us understand better AI capabilities to solve such a real-world problem of real-time power grid operations. L2 RPM, or Learning to Run a Power Network, is a series of competitions that aims at testing on more and more complex realistic environments the potential of AI to reliably operate a power grid in order to supply electricity while avoiding blackouts. We will focus especially on the robustness trap in which an attackant could unexpectedly disconnect power lines in an adversarial fashion. In our behavior analysis, we want to study scenarios in which agents perform better than others to find interesting differences in behavior understand why, discover complex action sequences in tough situations, highlighting advanced behavior, and yet understanding why such an agent might still fail. We will see that the best agent actually demonstrates some superhuman performance at some point, which is really impressive. To study the behaviors of agents over scenarios, we use this great and very comprehensive grid to be study tool we've developed. It is part of the Grid Alive Lab ecosystem, which relies on Grid to Work platform at its core to first run environments for agents. Launching Grid to Viz, you are first invited to select the scenario you want to study through scenarios over different months of the year, for instance, like during winter or summer. To select a scenario on which to compare agents with probably interesting different behaviors, we can take a look at the survival time heatmap. For each scenario and each available agent, you can see here the percentage of time the agent survived. Red color is for early blackout and green color when completing overall the scenario. Here we have naive baseline of the dosing agent, and we also have the top three agents represented from the competition for comparisons. We see that for some scenarios, the role for, for best agents is green which means they all did great, managing the whole weekly scenario. For some scenarios, only the best agent succeeds. For some other scenarios, they all struggle the same way. For some interesting scenarios, they all struggle, but the best agent is yet surviving more time, like over the, the December scenario number one. We'll hence investigate this interesting one in the following. As a reminder and some context about this robustness competition, here are the 10 lines the attackant could attack during the scenario. The two lines on the right are especially tough because those are very high voltage lines capable of transporting greater flows. Another reminder is the humongous action space dimension, which makes exploration and discovery of useful topological configuration very difficult. Here, for instance, there are more than 65,000 possible configurations at substation 60. Over 100,000 possible unitary actions over all substations are also possible. The combinatorial space of configuration is um, almost infinite in the end. Let's pick up our December scenario number one and compare the two best agents through it. When we open the scenario, we can see how the cost of operation changes over time for each agent. At first, it's very similar and later some differences appear as they are doing different actions. We can see time of actions with the yellow markers. We can also see period of attacks in purple and times of overflow with vertical dash red lines. It gets very intense after three days and a new probably strong attack. Luxigen agents immediately run into a blackout and it's a game over. Herald agents survive for a few hours in this attack, while its cost of operation rose significantly. It eventually fails over a new attack. Here we get a high level view also on how far each agent is running away from the initial configuration through its actions. The further away, the more complex the behavior can be, but possibly also the more dangerous. We see that Luxingen fares at a distance 4 from the initial configuration. Aerial agents moves away to a distance of 8, 
which lets him survive the strong attack that later ran him into a game over. To complete our high-level understanding of agent behaviors, we here look at the agent action distribution over the grid during the scenario. They both play on many substations all over the grid which display some diversity in their behavior. While some actions are similar between both, they don't necessarily play on the same substation and not at the same frequency. A agent performs a lot of actions, up to 31 during the scenario. Given that you have to carefully decide when to take an action, a random agent, for instance, fails in just a few time steps, it looks like quite a performance. Also, a real agent demonstrates widely coordinated actions, as we had some first insights previously, and we'll see in detail right after. We also see here a summary in order of the four lines that are getting attacked and the overload that appear over the 17 lines in the And now let's dive in this very tense but interesting period that only a real agent managed. It starts at 5.50 a.m. by a strong attack on the very high voltage line on the right. Three nearby lines get overloaded. The flow there needs to supply consumptions on the top right. All the lines supplying this area are also already loaded. The agent will have to find the right balance when redispatching the flow. It starts by acting on substation 23 and 26, which relieves the previous overflows on the right, but create new overflows on another corridor supplying consumption on the top right. With an additional action at substation 16, all overflows are solved for now, thanks to this three-step coordinated action sequence. 45 minutes later, at 6.50 a.m., a new overflow appears because the consumption is increased. The first new configuration at substation 23 solves it, but recreates the initial overflows. An additional sequence at substation at three substations solves those overflows, but again creates some new ones in the other corridor. Finally, a last action at substation 16 solves it at 7.25 a.m. A sequence of five actions was temporarily needed and this demonstrates some superhuman performance because operators usually only deal with up to three coordinated actions at the same time to try solving an issue. This was quite a remarkable move from the agent. This is a demonstration that AI can help augment operators' knowledge about grid flexibilities on the way towards an assistant. The previous configuration is robust for the remaining of the attack while the conception still keeps increasing. Finally, the agent recovers the attack line at 10 a.m., four hours later it started. We think it's done a great job there and we manage the remaining of the scenario now. But a new attack occurs 30 minutes later, while the agent remains in this very different configuration from the initial one, might know better. The line attacked is less critical than the previous high-voltage line. But this time, a real agent quickly fails, despite the last action, most probably because it's staying in a rather unknown configuration for him, from which he could not escape fast enough. That's a game over, and the end for our best agent there.